everybody it's your boy Antonio I'm here with my co-host Ray this is the overseas basketball podcast we have a special guest here today Kia Stokes of the New York Liberty what's going on Kia how you doing I'm good uh, thanks for having me um, excited to get to talk I guess <laughs> if anything <laughs> interesting I hope it is right 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 so so how's your quarantine going um, I hate it absolutely hate it uh, <laughs> I'm just getting antsy. I'm also at home with my mother. You know, I love her to death, but I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Where exactly, where exactly are you at? Right now I'm in Iowa. So I'm born and raised in Iowa, um, back with my mother. You know, usually I'm either in New York with the WNBA or overseas. So since everything's canceled, I'm homeless. So I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's start just from the beginning. Um, your time at UConn, three championships, your 2014 undefeated season. Um, you know, you made history. Talk, a little, talk to us about that a little bit. Um, UConn was one of the hardest things I ever had to do in my life, um, just in terms of the practice, the workouts, the mental toughness. So getting the undefeated season my junior year was like, it's, you can't even describe it. It was amazing. It made every workout, every day I thought about quitting worth it. Um, it was incredible, and you know my team and I will always had that to remember. So it's once in a lifetime, that's for sure. And um, I feel bad for the seniors this year that didn't get a chance to feel that. You know that that kind of sucks, but you know I'm glad we did. So <laughs> yeah, I, heard, I heard I heard Coach Gino's crazy. Is that true? <laughs> uh, yes, he's very crazy. <laughs> um, we definitely had a love hate thing going on. You know, I wasn't his favorite, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to say the least. I was not his favorite, but. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate everything you did for me. And looking back now, I can see why you would get so crazy. Uh, but, you know, it was worth it at the end. So, right. So at right, this point, right. you're kind of you like thankful for his craziness. Got to where you are today. Absolutely. You know, I'm very, very th thankful. You know, I realized that he saw potential in me, he saw what I could be. Um, so that's why he pushed me so hard. But very, very grateful and thankful. And, you know, realize all the madness now once I left. Dope, 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 dope. So 2015, let's go to 2015 now. Mm -hmm. WNBA draft. How was you feeling on the WNBA draft? And is the WNBA everything you thought it would be? Um, draft night was incredible. I was so nervous. The year before I had seen, they invite 12 girls to be like in the, in the, on the stage or like in the stage area. And the year before, there's one girl they invited, but she didn't get picked until, like, the third round. So when mm. I get there, I'm like, oh, my God, like, just don't let me be stuck here, like, by myself, just waiting and waiting. <laughs> so um, I ended up getting picked 11th, which I was super happy with. And they made some trades to get me in New York, which I didn't even think was going to be possible. Um, but I was super excited and happy and kind of in shock. And then, you know, a day later, because we weren't out of school yet, but a day later, I only had classes on Fridays, my senior semester. Um, so like the next day, I just drove to New York, got some workouts in with the coaching staff, and you know, kind of calmed my nerves. But it was um, it's incredible. I love it. It is everything I dreamt it would be, um, except yeah. for the pay. You know, when you're little, you think you're a pro, you're gonna be making right. money. <laughs> but um, other than that, like it's incredible to be playing at the highest level. Um, a kid from Iowa, who would have thought that? So right, like is. being from Iowa, did you ever like expect? to be in New York like was that your goal like to make it to a big city or, or were you just like whatever team picks me up is where I'd love to be yeah oh uh, I was really like wherever I get chosen my family you know they're trying to put in my head like oh if you go to Minnesota or Chicago or Indy you know you're really close to us and we come to all the games <laughs> I didn't really want that <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't tell them but um I was just happy to go anywhere 
Um, but like I said, that draft class in New York didn't have any first round picks. So I wasn't even thinking of going to New York, but they ended up making some trades. So that's how I got there, which very thankful. You know, I, it's, it'd be weird to see how it would be if I was drafted to another city or another team. Right. You right. Your experiences in the, in the WNBA would have been different if you would have ended up in a different city to start? I think so. Um, I think I was brought into like a really good place. You know, as a rookie, I was able to come in and contribute right away. Uh, because they were, I want to say, lacking in, like, the post position, but they had more opportunities. Right. So I kind of was able to step up. But if I would have went to a different team that had, you know, more established uh, veteran post players, maybe it would have been different. Um, like I said, I'm just really happy and thankful I got picked. Right, because right, you made the all-rookie team in 2015. Yeah, I did. Oh, my gosh, that seems like so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that long ago. When you think of New York, do you think of, the New York Knicks, do you think of like the New York Liberty when do you, do you guys ever have like this little rivalry going on with the Knicks and you guys? Um kind of. <laughs> so we used to <laughs> we used to be all under MSG. So like mm -hmm. the Knicks, the Rangers, and the Liberty used to just all be under Madison Square Garden. So we were all shared the same practice facility. Um so we would see the Knicks in there and the Rangers in the little cafe. It was all it was like fine. We were cool with everyone. But the only problem we would have is when we're trying to go on the court. So the way the gym is set up, they have two courts. One is specifically for the Knicks and one is specifically for the Liberty, but they're right next to each other. So when we would have practice, we only use our court, but then the Knicks players want to come out and we let them shoot. Like y'all can give you a little workout, just be quiet. But if the Knicks are practicing and we want to go and shoot on the court, they it's just- It's not happening. It. I was like, just <laughs> let you do it. Just let us do it. Like we're in season. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, that was the only problem if you want to call it that. But now, mm -hmm. um, since MSG sold us, now we're moving to the Nets side. So now we're with the Nets. So we're not with the, the Knicks anymore. So Hey, hey, oh. hey, you get to see Katie and Kyrie. Yeah, right? I was about to say that. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping that uh, next year when the leagues or whenever the NBA starts back up, the Nets get their shit together. Can I swear on this? I don't mean to. Yeah, you can cuss. No, good. <laughs> I hope they get um, it together so that – uh, when they make the playoffs, we'll be able to get tickets and go to the games because that's the that's the plan. So I can see them playing. That'd be nice. That'd oh, be nice. Man. Nice, now, nice, nice. When heading into, I guess the overseas world, was that something you looked forward to coming out of college? Did you know you were going to play overseas, like without a doubt, or is it just something you kind of fell into? Um, I knew I was going to play right away. I just knew that money wise, I could make a lot more overseas than in the WNBA. Um, so right away I was like, yeah, let's just make it happen and see where I go. And, you know, I got it right away because you're a first round draft pick and I went to UConn, you know, that's pretty good status wise. So I got immediate offers from Italy, Spain, um, South Korea, Turkey. So my first year I actually ended up going to South Korea, which was very different, but they were probably the best. Well, I've only played in two countries. So, but out of Turkey and South Korea, they were definitely the most uh, professional league, you know, very, what do you need? We can get it for you. They pay on time, nice facilities, Ooh. nice uh, medical staff and equipment. Like that was the best. Turkey on the other hand, love Turkey to death. You know, <laughs> I've been there for four years now, but um, they're, I would say a little less professional. They pay late. Um, that's the biggest thing. Sometimes the amenities aren't as nice as you'd want them to be, but. They pay back. Trust me, trust me, trust me. I know. When I played in Spain, no, when I played in Portugal, um, we our gym had no no heat. So we were working out practice <laughs> thing with no heat. Games, no heat. No. It was a nightmare, yo. It was how do you crazy. even get warm? Like how do you even play properly if you're cold? I would I would I would warm up in like a hoodie and like sweatpants and I would just I would just go out and warm warm up in that. But there's no heat. So like in December games it was it was freezing. Oh, wow. Yeah, my brother told me a similar story. He played in Spain a year, too, and their mm -hmm. gym was freezing. I was like, nope. I went to visit him. It was when I was in Korea, so I, we had, like, a break, so I went to visit him. And I walk in the gym just to watch their practice, and I walk right back out. I said, I'll see y'all later. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How was the culture there? How was the culture? Like, was it a culture shock when you first touched down in um, – in um, Korea and where's the other place you played at? In just, Turkey? Yeah. In Turkey. Um, it was definitely a culture shock. So, you know, I land and they pick me up from the airport. 
everything's in Korean, so I'm just like, the Where signs am I are going? Just on. <laughs> you know, our translator is driving me, and you know, in America, it's like right on red, unless there's a sign, right? So right. we're just at the light for like 10 minutes, and I'm like, um, Marie, that was her name. I was like, Marie, it's... It's red, but you can go right on red. She's like, no, right on red here? No. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so then um, I go straight from the airport just to practice, just to say hi to the girls. And, you know, I will walk in, and everyone comes and say hi. And then 10 minutes later, the coach walks in. So I'm on the bench just, like, talking to the translator and talking to the other American. And I was like, you know, just trying to get a feel for everyone on the team. The coach walks in. Everyone just gets up, runs to the door, and, like, bows to him. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like kid come on kid come on i was like oh okay so like every time <laughs> like, older or in a position of superior like so it was someone who was more superior to you you have to go and bow to them that was weird but they were a little lenient with us because obviously we weren't from there but right. everything else was pretty good like they're pretty advanced as a country you know it wasn't like we're going back in time so i, I was right lucky. So you would say you didn't have any, like, major obstacles other than, like, the language barrier that, to deal with? Uh, yeah, just a language barrier. And, well, and then I don't know how it is in China, but what I've heard is they practice a lot. So in Korea, we had, like, three practices a day. So I, yeah, it was – so the way, <laughs> the way they had it set up <laughs> is the other American on my team, there was a big training center, so they had – men's and women's basketball, men's and women's volleyball, table tennis, wrestling, and something else I forgot. Um, so they had just a big dorm area for all the athletes that they could live if they wanted to. So the Ameri other American actually lived at the dorm, like the whole five and a half months, whereas I had an apartment, which I shouldn't have had because I had to get picked up every day at seven to go to mandatory team breakfast. I'm like, wow, I'm not even eating. So the then- Mandatory team breakfast. Yes, like, hmm. but it was like all the athletes in the training center where like had this team breakfast, like hundreds of athletes. I'm just like, I don't want to. Sounds like a sounds like a game day every day. Like, yeah, you know how your coaches are more strict on game days. It seems like what it is. Yeah, so we had to go team breakfast at seven thirty, and then you could go. I had a dorm room there, so then you go to your dorm room and nap. I was like, I could have just slept until nine thirty. I don't need breakfast. So then we had like morning practice at ten. Then after morning practice, you go back and eat lunch, and then you can go upstairs and nap. And then you have evening or afternoon practice at, you know, two or three. And that was the hard practice for, you know, maybe three hours max. It was never more than three. Then you go eat dinner and then rest. And then you either go back for a night practice at, like, seven or eight, uh, eight or nine, and then – or film or treatment. I always did treatment. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm not doing any more of this. <laughs> but – um. <laughs> So then by the time I leave the training center and go back home, it's after 11. So right. I'm just like, been all there all day. And then it's like, all right, seven o'clock rolls around. I'm getting picked up. I was just like, dang, but dang. it's only been like that in Korea. So they just like to work. They just like Oh, to my work. gosh. So in Turkey, let's talk about Turkey now. You won the Turkey Women's Basketball League in 2019. Mm -hmm. So how was that? Do you think you have a, a pass? You can always go to Turkey now? Like, will they love you forever? Uh, absolutely. And I have a Turkish passport now, so it's even better. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how you got that. I don't want to know. I don't even want to know how you got that. <laughs> it doesn't even sound legal. <laughs> it's, I'm not really sure how, but it's a thing that people do. But it's good for I me. I know. In Turkish, <laughs> league, in Turkish League, you have to have at least two Turkish players on the court at a time. So if I count as Turkish, it could be me plus three foreigners oh. so you know, it's kind of like a so you found coach. a little loophole exactly um but yeah i mean turkey is amazing um i play on the biggest club right now uh Fenerbahce. i don't know how much you know about turkey but um i think they have a men's yeah. team their men's team is really good euro league i think right yeah well this past year um until it got canceled they were struggling a little bit but in the mm -hmm. past they've been yeah really really good right but yeah I, mean, I love turkey i've been there four years um hopefully i'm about to sign my next contract but they're a little in eh, with the money right now i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so you would say turkey over south korea though um in terms of competition lifestyle yes and you eventually you make more money but turkey is i would say more unprofessional in terms of like they pay late um they just they do things a little different than we're used to um like they try to give us curfews 
and stuff. And I'm just like, you know, I'm 20. Well, I was 26. I was like, I'm 26. I feel like it's an off day. You don't need to tell me to be in my house at 11 on an off day. Like, just like, like what that. are the consequences here if I don't abide? <laughs> I mean, it's not like they do house checks or anything, but the way <laughs> the way it is in Turkey, because if you're on a big club, there's fans all over, like diehard fans. So if they see you out, they like take videos. Uh, like, they're crazy like that. But, you know, I try to just be low key as possible. But they'll so find what, would, what would you say then are like the major differences between playing in the States in the WNBA and playing overseas as far as like ba- the basketball side of it? The basketball side? Um, the WNBA is the best competition, obviously. Um, every given night you're going to go against a really, really hard team. Um, you could win or lose, just depends on how you play. Overseas? um the competition isn't necessarily the best I mean there'll be some teams and players that are really really good but it's less consistent um than playing over here and the refs don't like Americans overseas so oh no <laughs> you're not getting any calls um especially in Turkey oh a Turkish girls guarding you they will foul like they will foul you until you bleed and they will not get called for a foul <laughs> but if you do a little two-handed tap you get in a foul like the refs oh, wow. don't like Americans that's like the, one of the biggest things I've noticed. Oh, man. I've watched some of your highlights. Um, I like your point guard in Turkey. She's really good. Have you ever came across anybody, like, playing overseas in the EuroLeague that you thought was not the import players, like, not the Americans, uh-huh. that you thought were better than some WNBA players? Um, Think hard. I know. That's <laughs> The problem is, I don't want to say it's a problem, but we played against, even this past year, I played against some really, really great, like there's a Spanish girl, Live Palau, but when we played her this year, she was like, okay, but that's because she's over 40. But if I would have played her, you know, seven years ago, she was like DT, like Dana Sarazi status, like that's what she was. Right. So I got like the, the later end of some like really, really greats, but um, I mean, the girl on my team, Alina Yagopova, she's Ukrainian. She is a beast, like, incredible. She has the LA Sparks have her rights, but she just never wants to come to America. I'm oh, like, girl, you dominate you're, this, dude. You're, you're beating around the bush. Have you ever met somebody <laughs> that's better? You got to say it, yes or no? I mean, her, she's one. Like, okay, okay, there we go, okay. there we go. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, none in Korea, huh? None in Korea, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a bunch of Serbians that are really good, I wouldn't necessarily say they're better, um, but they can hold their own. Nice, nice, so, nice. Yeah, I mean, the girl on my team, Alina, she is like crazy. She got, MVP I don't know, I, I like, I liked your point guard, I loved your point guard. Which one? Oh, yeah, this year or last year? The one, I think it was this year's highlights. Oh my God. Is that? Wait, I don't know. Turkish? She had she had dark hair in the Turkish league. I think it was the Turkish league. Okay, so that was probably last year then. Last year. It might have been last year then. Yeah, yeah, no, she was good. She's, uh, yeah, she's she was good. good. Yeah. I like her. So would you but, um, say that the, the um, Turkish league, does it make you better heading into the next WNBA season? Um... Like, since they play rougher and you don't get those calls that you would usually get, you learn to, like, play through it? Yeah, that in that sense, you do. Um, Conditioning-wise, since you're playing year-round, you always go into the league in pretty good shape. So training camp is not that hard. Um, but it really is how much work you want to put in outside the court. Because overseas, you know, you practice once or twice a day maybe, well, in Turkey. But to me, the practice aren't too intense, and it's not a lot of individual skill work. So in order to keep getting better, I do – I try to do – extra workouts or come in early or stay late and just do individual stuff. Otherwise it's kind of, you you just kind of go through the motions and then you kind of get, you know, stagnant and lazy coming into the WNBA. Gotcha. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Do you honestly think the WNBA season is going to come back? Uh, Ah, oh man. (laughs) Um, I really think, uh, I think so. I don't know if it's going to be the full season, um, but if it does happen, we're all going to have to go to a campus somewhere, be secluded, you know, for two or three months. And 
only talk to the players that are in the league. Like, no fans, no family can visit. We probably won't be able to leave. Otherwise, there'll be no way to contain, you know, if someone can get corona, then we're all going to get it, basically. So, I don't know. But I think they're going to find something. Like, I really do. I know they're having meetings every day, talking to the league, our union, uh, different facilities um, that we can maybe use. Like, they're really trying. It's just... Well, you know, I heard at least for the NBA, they were thinking about taking up the strip. So the players would come and stay in the hotels with only essential staff. They could use, they could go to the restaurants, they could gamble, they could use the spas. Yeah. And then they travel to the stadiums and the arenas that are around because Vegas has like five arenas that are like within a couple miles of each other. So they right. were thinking about just blocking it off and making it their own like little NBA neighborhood. So I feel like that would be a good idea for the WNBA too. That's what I think. And I know they're talking about it. I also heard for the NBA, they were looking at that in Orlando too, because they have a lot of mm-hmm. facilities, which would be great. And I'd be all for it. But then it comes to the questions of like, how do we all get testing for all the players? Um, because it's the beginning of the season, how are we going to do training camps? You know, how are we going to cut the roster of the 12 people without watching them? Like, it's just a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm just like, eh. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to get my hopes up too high because I don't want to be disappointed. But right now, I don't know. It's tough. But I'm hoping. I'm wishing. I just – I want a paycheck. Turkey <laughs> <laughs> yeah. still owes me my February and March salary that I didn't get. <laughs> and then oh, no. Start. <laughs> Damn, Turkey. <laughs> Listen. Right. I'm, I mean, because I'm on the biggest club, um, it'll I'll get paid eventually. But you know, they're just you know a few months late. That's all. Oh, you're gonna sabotage. They don't pay. You're gonna tell them, no, but nobody can go play there no more. <laughs> you're gonna nah. sabotage. It. <laughs> I mean, I like I'm lucky. It's a big club, so they will pay eventually. But mm, right. right. I'm telling you now, I never got some of my money. <laughs> my team still owes me money. They owe me some euros. Really? Nah. Nah. Yes. No. <laughs> but um but final question um if you could play in any country regardless of pay regardless of pay regardless of you know the the yeah basically just pay <laughs> where would you where would you where would you play at and why um if i could play anywhere i would probably say spain or italy I just think, like, they're incredible. There's a lot of places you can visit in each one. Um, I love Barcelona, so Mm -hmm. that was one. Um, But I think I have a really good time. It'd be really fun. The food is great. Um, Yeah, I'd probably say one of those two. Yeah, they love basketball. I heard Israel's really nice. I heard Israel's really nice, too. I heard it's, like, very Americanized. I heard it gets people in trouble (laughs) because they (laughs) – some of my friends – um, that play there, like they have practice every day in the evening, like at six or seven. So they usually like go to practice, go to dinner, then go to the club. And then <laughs> they can sleep in all day until, you know, two or three and then do it all again. So. <laughs> hey, that sounds lit. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Kia. We appreciate you for coming on. Um, do you have any um, like advice for another, wh- another girl that's trying to go overseas? Um, I would just say reach out to an agency um always have a highlight tape ready and um stay in shape like that's the biggest thing no coach wants to bring you over then for you to get in shape they want players to come ready um but definitely find an agency or an agent you trust and then get a highlight tape if you're you know not a known player um that way you can they can see your skills um but yeah stay in shape is also a big one too perfect 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 Thank you Thank so you. much. We appreciate you. Yeah, uh, no, stay please. safe during quarantine. Don't do nothing <laughs> I wouldn't do. Tell your mom we said hey. I will try. Right. <laughs> I will try. She's at work right now. So. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, Kia. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.